guys, I'm here at my cutting table and I'm gonna show you how to draw out your template to use for your drawstring bag. So really simply what I'm gonna do is I'm using a piece of cardboard I've got and this is just an old file I had laying around and I'm going to do a semicircle of my template really just because then I don't have to get a massive piece of cardboard or paper to do a complete circle on. So we're using fat quarters um, to make our travel drawstring bag from today. So a fat quarter generally is about 50 to 55 centimetres square roughly. So measure the fabric you've got first to determine how big your circle can be. So I'm going to go with the maximum size I can. So because I've got this piece of paper here, simply I'm just going to measure how wide my piece of card is. And that is 46 and a half centimetres. So I'm going to do my circle 45 centimetre diameter. So I'm going to use what I've got basically. So I'm just going to mark on here 45 centimetres. I'm using my tape measure to do this. So I'm just literally along the bottom here marking 45 centimetres. Now also what you need to do is make sure you've got a nice straight edge and 90 degree angle here. So really helpful if you've got a square ruler because um, it gives you that 90 degree angle straight away. So just double check that whatever you're using to draw your pattern onto is nice and straight. So you can see there that definitely is. So just check both corners and this is going to be the middle or the bottom of my semicircle, so the middle of my circle. And I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. I've got a nice bit of string here with my pencil and to draw my semicircle round shape, I'm going to use my string and pull my um, pencil round, of course, like I learned at school. So next job we need to do, we've marked out our, our full length. So mine was 45 centimetres. Um, I need to find now the centre of that. So I'm just going to re-put my tape measure on and just mark the centre because that's where I'm going to put my finger or, or pin or whatever to bring my string out to make my semicircle shape. So half of 45 is 22 and a half. So I'm going to find that. Oh, look at that. That's pretty much right on that fold there. That's really good. That's because, yes, it's a bit bigger on one side. So that's cool. So that gives me a really good centre mark, in fact. So that's really handy. And then you want to measure... If you're using a piece of string, you want to measure your piece of string right out to the point of your pencil, 22 and a half centimetres or half of the um, diameter that you're using. So that's going to be to there. And I'm just going to pop a little pin through my string at that point. OK, just so I remember. So that length there, my pencil is going to go in this little loop that I've made on the end. Um, that is 22 and a half centimetres. So if I pop that here, there you go. Look, it reaches that little mark I've made and that's what's going to help me get that semicircle shape. Um, so once you've done that and you know that you've got nice straight right angles where you need them, you can then draw in that um, circular shape that you need. So let's see if it's going to work by using this pin. So I've put this pin through the string here. So I'm just going to see if I can use that without putting too much pressure on to draw my semicircle. I'm going to pop my pencil in my little loop here that I've made. You don't want to put up your pencil too far because it's going to change the shape. I'm going to bring that right to one corner. And then hopefully my card moved slightly there. Um, I'm going to then draw my semicircle on. Woo. just about I think <laughs> very hard to do it one-handed if you've got a helper definitely get them to give you a hand so you can double check your semicircle is looking okay because at every um, edge on the semicircle to this center point should be 22 and a half centimeters or should be the diameter that your circle is going to be so as long as that marries up all the way around you are on track to make a circle. So once you've done that, once you've got your semicircle, you then need to cut this out. Remember, use your paper scissors um, so that you don't blunt your fabric scissors. Ta-da! 
We now have our semicircle ready to use as our template to transfer to our fabric. I'm going to draw this on with either an ordinary pencil or a tailor's chalk onto the reverse of my fabrics I'm choosing and I want to have an outer fabric and a lining fabric so that's what I'm going to do next. Okay so I'm now going to cut my circle template out of my fabric. So I'm choosing this gorgeous lilac um, rainbow fabric for the outside of my bag. What you can do because we're using a semicircle template, you want to get that center fold nice and straight. So fold your fabric piece in half, first of all. Give it a press or something along that center fold and open it back up. And then that will give you the line for where you need to lay your semicircle. So first of all, we're gonna lay our semicircle on the top here of the line. Make sure it fits on your fabric and I'm just going to use my pencil to trace around that semicircle really gently so my fabric doesn't move. Tracing all the way around that semicircle template. And then I would just double check your pattern has transferred before moving and then you want to flip your semicircle down you want to go along that center fold again that you've done in your fabric marry up the two corners here and then draw your bottom template on double check it's transferred Ta -da! there we are so you can now cut that circle out that is template number one what you could do is you could cut out one and use that cut out template from your fabric to cut out your second piece of fabric your lining fabric so I'm now going to grab my fabric scissors and I'm going to cut this circular template out So again, you could also use a rotary cutter for this if you want to. I find when I'm cutting circular shapes, um, large circular shapes, that my scissors are more accurate, so my hands is more accurate than the rotary cutter. But whatever works for you. side and that hopefully now you've got a pretty good circle um, of fabric your first fabric so you want to cut out another fabric now which is going to be your lining fabric and this can be a cotton fabric um, it could be a poly cotton fabric or oh, I'm going to use something slightly different I'm going to use a waterproof fabric and I'm simply using a shower curtain not a used shower curtain, don't panic, it is a new one, but this works perfectly to keep it, to keep the water resistant in something like a little bag that's not gonna get overly wet. So it just protects the outside fabric and gives it that little bit of water resistance inside. So this is great if you want to use it as a little cosmetic bag. It's white clean as well. Obviously this can all go in the wash as well once it's been made, um, but it just gives that sort of extra durability. If you're wanting to put, um, items inside that maybe might get a little bit messy. So I'm going to use this, it's a bit slippery so it takes lots of clips to keep it in place but I'm just going to use my other fabric here now as a template for my shower curtain fabric. And I'm going to do exactly the same, I'm going to cut out that circle from my fabric exactly the same size. So I'm just going to pop a few pins around here just to hold it in place while I'm cutting. Alternative to shower curtain, um, I just find this really easy to use because they're cheap, you can get a few different designs, just make sure you don't get the plastic ones and you get the fabric um, shower curtains. But fabrics that you could use um, that will work obviously the same, that are waterproof, are ripstock. You can buy ripstock fabric in all sorts of colours and designs and that's a water resistant fabric and perfect for using for this type of thing.
So a little tip for when you're cutting, um, you want to try and keep your fabric as close to your cutting table as you can when you're using scissors. Cutting can be one of those really tricky stages um, to a sewing project because people find it really hard to cut accurately around a pattern um, or in a straight line. And one of the key top tricks is to try and keep your fabrics nice and close to your work surface while you cut. So it keeps your fabric nice and flat and still while you're trimming. Um, if you pick your fabric up, that's when it starts moving away from your pattern. So you wanna try and keep it flat on your work surface so that you can cut around the edge easily and accurately. So there we are. That's my second piece cut. So I've got my lining fabric now and I've got a outer fabric. I'm just gonna remove those pins and they're ready to be sewn. I'm also just going to give my outer fabric a little press. You want to avoid pressing the um, waterproof fabric on any sort of temperature. You can press it on a really light temperature or put a piece of cotton over the top when you press it um, to take out the creases. So I'm going to do that. And then after we've done that, we're going to need some bias binding to go all the way around the outside. If you haven't got bias binding, you can just cut a strip of fabric and fold it in half. That's absolutely fine. But it's best to cut it on the bias of the fabric so it gives that bit of stretch. I have got a video to show you how to make your own bias binding. I'll include that um, just at the top here to help you make your own. Okay, so I've now given my fabrics a good press, so they're nice and um, got all the wrinkles and creases out. So I'm now ready to apply um, my bias binding all the way around the outside of my circle. So what you need to do um, to do this is to work out the circumference of your circle. Now I used a little online tool and I'm gonna share that online tool with you in the comments. So if you want to use that as an automatic circumference um, calculator, I'll pop it in the comments for you. But what you're going to need to um, use that circumference calculator is you're going to need the radius of your, cir your circle, which is from the centre point to the outside point, and you're going to need the diameter, which is the measurement the whole way across. So the radius is from the edge to the middle, and the diameter is all the way across. And that's all you need, and it will work out your circumference. So mine came to 142 centimetres all the way round, and I'm going to add a couple of centimetres on um, to allow for me to turn over the edges of my raw edge of the bias binding. So I'm using shop bought bias binding um, just for ease really, but you can cut your own and all you need to do is cut your fabric on the bias so that it's got a slight stretch to it so that we can ease it around the corners of our circle. If you're using a shop bought bias binding that has the folds already ironed in for you like this, you're gonna need to iron your bias binding open and flat and then iron it in half. If you're making your own um, cut bias fabric, you just need to cut your fabric strips two inches wide, leave them flat, so don't fold in your bias um, edges to the middle, but you need to iron it in half. So then you'll be left with a folded strip of fabric to the size of your circumference that you've worked out, plus two centimetres extra for the edge. Now the two centimetres extra, all we're gonna do is just turn over the edges of our bias bindings, the open ends, to get rid of the raw edges basically. So just a centimetre one side and a centimetre the other side. And before we do anything, I'm just gonna stitch those two folded over edges down. So I'm just turning that in a centimetre each end. Okay, so all I've done to begin is I've folded over the two raw edges of my bias binding. Just to get rid of these raw edges, I've just used the centimetre each end and I've just folded them over and I've stitched across that fold to hold it down in place. And I've actually chose to do a zigzag stitch along here, along this folded edge. I just felt it kept it a bit flatter because it's quite narrow um, to stitch a top stitch on and also there's not a lot of fabric there. One top tip is when you start sewing don't sew too close to the outside edge because as you begin and the needle goes in your fabric it's going to push that fabric down into the feed of your sewing machine plate. So just start a little bit further in because there's not a lot of fabric there to hold it um, nice and sort of firm as you're sewing. So I've done that on both ends of my bias binding. I've ironed my bias binding in half, so I've now got a big folded strip with two nice neat ends on there. 
So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my top fabric. I'm going to move my lining fabric out of the way. I'm going to get my top fabric for my bag. I'm going to keep my strip folded in half and the raw edge, the open edge of that strip, I'm going to line up with the raw edge of the outside of my bag and I'm going to pin this on in place all the way around. And then you want to come up to the end where your two folded edges meet again. Okay, so at the end here where my pieces are meeting, I've sort of overestimated, I rounded my circumference up slightly. Um, so I'm just gonna turn over one of those edges slightly more, just so they meet, um, so they butt up nice and tidy. So this is an easy adjustment to make as you get there. So I'm just gonna fold this over now to see where I want it to lie. So you want them just to basically meet. Um, you don't want it any more than that. So I'm just gonna go back to my sewing machine now and just stitch along that edge again and cut off the excess and then I'll be ready to sew so my bias binding on all the way around the edge. Okay, so I've just now adjusted this um, open edge. So they now sort of line up, butted up to each other equally. I've just re-sewn that, that edge over and snipped off the excess. I'm happy with that. What I want to do now is I want to apply my lining on top of this. So I've got the right side of my fabric facing me. I want the right side of my fabric facing this, so right sides together. On a shower curtain, there is no particular right side, so any side is absolutely fine. And then I'm just gonna move the clips to attach that lining as well. Now, the reason I didn't do it all in one go, um, and I'm re-clipping now as I go around, is because I just wanna make sure that bias binding got in the, on that top fabric nice and evenly around the edge. I was able to make that adjustment as well, and I'm just gonna move some of these clips out now to catch all the three layers in. Okay, so now, like I said, the shower curtain fabric or the waterproof fabric, if you're using a waterproof one, can be a bit slippery and shiny. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add a few pins in intervals around the edge of my fabrics, holding them all together and stopping them from moving too much as I sew. If you're using two cotton fabrics, you may not feel you need to do this. So now what I'm going to do is go to my sewing machine, I'm going to put it on a standard straight stitch and I'm going to sew all the way around my circle circumference now. I want to leave a gap somewhere so I can turn that in the right way. I don't want to leave that gap where I've got my opening. I want to leave it somewhere else on my circle away from where my two ends of my bias binding meet. So I'm going to leave a good gap, probably about three inches to turn it in the right way and then we can seal that up afterwards. So let's head over to the sewing machine and sew round our circle. Okay, so I'm at my sewing machine now. I'm just about to sew around the circumference of my circle. A couple of things I want to consider when I'm doing this. I want to make sure I catch in all three layers of fabric that I now have. So that's my outer fabric, my bias binding in the middle that's folded in half, and then my lining fabric also. Just take your time. If your lining fabric starts to move, just stop and readjust it before you go again. So I've chosen a position to start sewing away from my opening here. So this is where my bias binding is joining. So I'm just starting probably about five or six inches away from that area. But anywhere away from that is absolutely fine. I'm following my sewing machine foot. I've got a standard sewing machine foot on here. I've got a white thread in my machine, but you're not going to overly see that. Um, and I am following the edge of my sewing machine foot to the edge of my fabric, which gives me a one centimetre-ish seam allowance. 
want to take my time and I just want to make sure those three fabrics stay in line with each other underneath as well so I catch them all in my sewing. I'm going to do a back stitch when I begin and a back stitch when I finish. Okay, so I've now sewn all the way around my circumference of my circle. Don't forget, when you come to the end, you need to leave yourself a good two to three inch gap to make sure you could turn it in the right way. But I've stitched all the way around the circumference. Um, I've gone over that join where my bias bindings met and I've just made sure they've led nice and flat. So that's where my bias bindings are meeting there. And I've left my two to three inch gap just past that so I can turn it in the right way. So I can now take out these sta stabiliser pins. I'm going to give it a snip all the way around. So just like I said, about one to two centimetres apart. So I'm doing about two centimetres in fact, because it's quite a big circumference. Just some little snips so that when I turn it in the right way, it's going to lay nice and flat. Okay, so I've snipped all the way around. I've just left the opening there. I haven't snipped there, um, but I've snipped all the way around the rest of my circle. And now it's ready to turn in the right way. So trim off any of your loose threads, get rid of all those, make sure your work is nice and neat. And now you want to turn it in the right way to reveal your hopefully circle and you've caught in all your layers. You can double check you've caught in all your layers before you turn it in the right way. If you just go around the edge, you should be able to see all three fabrics poking out the outside edge of your stitch line because if you've missed any, you want to go back over that area. So we're gonna pull it all out. This is the opportunity now to give it another press if you wanted to. So your bias binding folded in half, that gives you the channel to put your um, thread through in a moment to make your drawstring effect. So the only gap where you're gonna have a hole is the gap that we left open to turn it in the right way. Your bias binding where it meets should be something like that. It doesn't matter if it's a bit closer, as long as you can get a thread in it either side to do a drawstring and your bias binding should be attached all the way around to your outer and your inner fabric. So just double check that is the case. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna sew up that gap that I've got there. Really simply, all I'm gonna do um, where it's open here, where I've left a gap to turn it in the right way. I'm just going to fold over those two edges of the lining and the outer fabric and I'm going to pop a pin in there and then I'm going to stitch across to seal that up. And I'm going to stitch on the outside fabric just because that tends to be where you get it neater on the side that you stitch from. And I'm just going to stitch across a row of straight stitch um, to close that gap up. So what I'm going to do on mine, just to finish it off nicely, you can do this after you've given it a press, is I'm going to now stitch across a straight stitch to, to close this gap up where I pop some pins in here so that I haven't now got that gap in my bag. But I'm going to carry on all the way around the circumference of my circular drawstring bag. Just finishes it off very off nicely and also disguises that area where you've sewn up the hole. So I'm going to be following about half a centimetre away from the edge where my fabric is attached to my bias binding. And this is a top stitch. You want to make sure that fabric underneath stays nice and flat and out the way. So definitely worth a press. And you can put a few pins around it just to hold the two fabrics flat. Remember to do a back stitch when you begin and when you finish. And take your pins out as you go.
I started. I've just done a back stitch when I've met up with that stitch where I began. You can just check your work, make sure you've caught it all and there's no puckers, but that just finishes it off nicely. And you can see inside, I've done it with a purple thread inside so you can see, it just run, runs around the outside. So that just finishes it off. That stage isn't necessary, you don't have to do that. I just like it, gives it a nice neat finish. So all that's left to do now is to put your drawstring in and see if it works. Okay, so you now need to choose what you're gonna thread around your bias binding to use as your drawstring. You can use all sorts of things for this. I'm using piping cord, you can use um, coloured cord, which would look really pretty also, or you can use some ribbon as well. It doesn't matter, whatever you have, and that's gonna act as your drawstring. So to feed my piping cord through, this would be the same circumference as your circle, but obviously allow yourself extra to overhang. I'm popping a safety pin in the end of mine and I'm then gonna feed that through my bias binding um, channel all the way through till it comes out the other end. So once your safety pins come out the other side, just make sure that it doesn't disappear down and then just pull the fabric all the way around so you can get it as flat as you can. So you can measure how long you want your cords or your ribbon or whatever you're using. And as you can see, it's really nice. The bias binding kind of sits up um, and it acts as like a little lip around your drawstring bag which is why it's fab for keeping everything in one place. As you open it, you can play with whatever's in there or use whatever's in there. It keeps it in this little circle plate as such, and then you can draw it back up afterwards. So I'm gonna pull this through a little bit more because I probably wanna have a little overhang of about that much. So just sort of decide how long or how much sorry, you want overhanging. Ease it back round again so it's pretty straight. And then I'm gonna cut off the other end. And then with these ends, I'm just gonna tie my two ends in a knot like so. So I've tied them together. If you put a spring fastener on of any sort, mine are just a little bit too small for my cord, you need to tie at the end once the fastener's on so it doesn't get pulled off. So once you've put your drawstrings in and you've chose what you're using, you then need to fill your bag with all the lovely goodies that you want to store in there. So I'm gonna put all my lovely threads in here. And then you just want to pull your drawstring and seal all the goodies inside. And there you have it. We've now finished our little drawstring travel bag. It's a fabulous little present and little gift. It's great for storing all your favourite things in. Um, you can keep it anywhere. You could take it on your holly bobs. You could take it in the car, out to a restaurant for the kids with their toys in. Um, the choices are endless. It's fun to make, super easy and would also make a fabulous little gift. So I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. I can't wait to see how yours turn up. So do share a picture in the comments. I love to see what you're making. And until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.